So guys, we have already defined the standard Ethernet header format in layer2.h header file. Now next we will going to define the ARP standard headers and the same is to be defined in the same file that is layer2 slash layer2.h. So we will going to define the ARP broadcast request message and ARP reply message. These are the two basic ARP type messages that we need in order to accommodate our functionality into our project. So ARP message whether it is a broadcast request message or ARP reply message are encapsulated inside an Ethernet frame. So you can see that this is an Ethernet header and the payload part of this Ethernet header is what is an ARP message. Now this payload part could be an ARP broadcast request message or it could be an ARP reply. The type field of the Ethernet header will be set to the value 806 because 806 is a standardized value for ARP messages. If the type field in the Ethernet header is 806, it simply means that the payload part of the Ethernet header contains an ARP message. Now that ARP message could be ARP broadcast request message or it could be ARP reply message. How to differentiate between these two type of messages we will see shortly. The value 806 only says that the payload part is an ARP message. 806 do not say whether the payload part contains ARP broadcast request message or ARP reply message. There is a separate field which is used to distinguish between these two types of ARP messages. Now going forward, let us enlarge how this payload part of this Ethernet header is structured. So you can see that these green colored boxes is actually the formatted representation of an ARP message. The corresponding data structure which represent the standard ARP message is here on the right hand side, right? So you can see that the first field is the hardware type. The hardware type is always one for Ethernet cable. And the size of this field is two byte. The next field is actually the protocol type field. So since we are using our protocol for IPv4 addresses, therefore the value of this prototype field of an ARP message will always be hexadecimal 0800, right? So it is also a fixed value. And the size of this field is 2 bytes. The next field is a 1 byte field and it is the size of hardware address. Now hardware address is a MAC address and we know that the size of the MAC address is 6 bytes. So it means that the value of this field will always going to be 6. Then the next field is again a 1 byte field that is proto address LAN and for IPv4 this, the value of this field is always 4. So this field basically represents the length of IPv4 addresses in bytes, right? So we can see that the first four fields of our pattern are actually constant values. So what will vary for us is the rest of the field in this R pattern. Now the next field in the R pattern is an opcode. It is a two byte field and it is this field which says whether this particular R message is a R broadcast request message or R reply message. If the value of this opcode is 1, it means it is an R broadcast request message. And if the value of this field is 2, then it means that it is an R reply message. These are the standardized values that is assigned to the R broadcast request or R reply message. The next field is the source MAC address, which is a 6 byte field and followed by 4 byte field, which represents a source IP address. Then the next two field is a destination MAC address and destination IP address which are 6 bytes and 4 bytes respectively. So you can see that in layer2.h header file just above the Ethernet header structure you can define the ARP header structure as well. Right? And all standard message types are to be defined in tcpconst.h header file. So you can see that we have a file called tcpconst.h and all the standardized values should be hash defined in this file. 
So you can see our broadcast request is assigned a value 1, ARP reply message is assigned value 2, the ARP message is assigned value 806, the broadcast MAC address is nothing but these are 48 bits which are set to 1. So all the standard message types will go in this file that is tcpconst.h. So guys let's have a quick example in which we will show you what all values should go in different fields of an ARP header whenever a machine in a topology attempt for ARP resolution. So in this example you can see that we have a host machine H1 which is directly connected to a host machine H2. Now suppose the host machine H1 is looking for ARP resolution for next hope IP address 10.1.1.2, right? So as a result the host machine H1 will send ARP broadcast request message out of its local interface Ethernet 0 by 1 to the host machine H2, right? So in such a scenario what will be the content of each field of Ethernet header and ARP header. So you can see that this diagram shows the contents of Ethernet header. So you can see that the destination MAC address of Ethernet header will be broadcast MAC address and the source MAC address of the Ethernet header will be the MAC address of the outgoing interface on which ARP resolution is happening. So this is the MAC address of an interface Ethernet 0 by 1 of node H1. The type field will be set to 806. The payload part will contain our broadcast request message, right? And then the last field of the Ethernet header is a CRC field or FCS field. In our project, we will not going to use this field, therefore we will set to zero. However, in reality, this field will be set to some value which is computed from the content of the packet. Now coming to the content of ARP header which is encapsulated inside an Ethernet header. We have already discussed that the first four fields of an ARP message will always going to be constant, right? Now since this ARP message is particularly an ARP broadcast request message, therefore opcode field will be set to 1. The source MAC address will be set to the MAC address of the outgoing interface on which our broadcast request message is being sent out. Similarly, the source IP address will be the IP address of an interface on which our resolution is happening. Then destination MAC address is something which we are looking to find and therefore it will be left as zero. And destination IP address will be the IP address of a next hope machine for which ARP resolution is being done. So destination IP address will be 10.1.1.2. So this entire frame containing an Ethernet header, the payload part of which is an ARP request message, is combinedly called as an ARP broadcast request message. Now going forward, now when the host machine S2 receives a R broadcast request message, then obviously it would reply with the R reply message, right? So let us examine the contents of various fields when the message in question is actually an R reply message. So the, you can see that the destination MAC address in the Ethernet header will be the MAC address of the interface on which R resolution was being done, right? And the source MAC address will be the MAC address on which ARP reply message is being sent out. The type field will again set to 806 only and the payload part will contain an ARP message of type ARP reply, right? So again you can see that the first four fields of an ARP header is again set to the same values and opcode will be set to 2 because it is an ARP reply message. The source MAC address will be the MAC address of an interface on which ARP reply message has been sent out. The source IP address will be the IP address of an interface on which ARP reply message has been sent out. The destination MAC address will be the MAC address of an interface on which 
our broadcast request message was originally sent right so this will be the mac address of interface ethernet 0 by 1 of host machine h1 and finally the destination ip address will be the ip address to which this our reply message is destined to or in other words this destination ip address is equal to the source ip address in the our broadcast request message so you can see that actually the values of these four fields that is the source MAC address and source IP address and destination MAC address and destination IP address are actually flipped between our broadcast request message and our reply message. So when we will be writing a logic to prepare our broadcast request message and our reply message, we will be filling the fields of our broadcast request message or our reply message with these values.